my shepherd i shall not want that's the same thing i'm passing on to you that you have so much confidence in christ as your shepherd you will not be conscious of this this or that and then some people maybe you are here and you're in deeper life and then you stray away to a particular assembly and over there they say kill my enemy kill my enemy and they say ah, this is prayer and they pray and they sweat well, to start with, I think we need to be a little bit uh, intelligent. If you were there last year and they said, kill my enemy, and then you were there you know, about three months ago, kill my enemy, you've been going there for one whole year, and every time there are 52 weeks in the year, and in three years, I think I'm going to have 156 times they've gone there. And if you said it in three years, every Sunday, kill my enemies, kill my enemies. If those enemies are, have not died, I think that this, this instrument is not strong enough to kill the enemy. I think we need to change methods. I said we need to change methods. Are you saying the same thing? I was passing through the, you know, yesterday in one of the halls over there, and I saw something they wrote like this. They said, insanity. And they said, this is the insane person who keeps on doing the same thing over and over, and expects a different result. I said, what? This is something. This is insanity. For somebody to be going to a place and you say something 100 times, 150 times, 156 times, and the thing doesn't work, and you keep on saying it, I will not keep on saying the same thing that doesn't work. The one that works is this. This, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. That's why I don't come with bottles of oil. What do I need the oil for when Jesus is there? Or the water when Jesus is there? Or somebody doing, giving me a formula? What do I need a formula for when Jesus Christ is there? The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down. There's no anxiety. There's no worry. There's no panicking. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. And in, in this conference, he will restore your soul. And you just know I was going astray, but now the Lord has restored my soul. And he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. You know, people, they look ahead. They borrow the trouble of tomorrow. They bring it to today. And they have not even gone to the, they are not in the valley yet. And they're just dreaming and imagining and moving on. And they told me that once you get to this age and this time and this period, Sure, you're going to get into that valley. I said, wait until you get there. And you'll find when you get there, the shepherd is there before you. And, but people keep on imagining that when I get there tomorrow, when I get there next week, they told me that's a bad experience, a painful experience, and I don't know whether I will survive. I'm surviving. And I'm going to keep on surviving. Because yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm looking at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then I'm hearing what Nebuchadnezzar had said. And Nebuchadnezzar said, when you hear the sound of that music, if you fall down, worship, that will be all right. But if you refuse to worship, I will cast you into the burning, furry furnace. And who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand. Brothers and sisters, don't think about it. When we get into the fire, we'll see the deliverer. 
you torment yourself and you say the fire is there he will cast us there and it's just about one hour to go it's about 30 minutes to go you are not thinking about any other thing you're thinking just about the fire just relax forget about it. do you know that the son of god did not show up until they got into the fire when you get there you'll find the lord is there do i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me that's why his name is emmanuel god with us thy rod and thy staff they comfort me and then it says that prepares a table before me in the presence of of who you know what my understanding of the word of god doesn't allow me to pray for my enemies to die i'm just wondering now if all these enemies have died then god prepares a table before me and then i'm enjoying that how will my enemies see that in spite of what they have done i'm still all right i want them to be alive so they can see i said i want them to be alive so they can see Hey, you know, if those enemies die, how will they see? Let them keep alive. But they are chained and they are tied down. They may roar, but that is nothing. And they may pretend to be powerful, but are they really more powerful than the Lord Jesus Christ? When Goliath was roaring and shouting and screaming and saying, I challenge you, bring me a man here. Everybody was afraid. But David said, don't be afraid of him. It's all noise. It's all steam. There is no power there. I'll take him on. Do you need a Saul's armor? What do I need that for? Why make much ado about a non-entity, about a nobody? Why are you going to go into all that trouble because of Goliath? I have a sling here, I have a stone here. Well, I've got five, but one will, one will get rid of him. I said one will get rid of him. You know, that's uh, one out of five. That's just 20%. You know, 20% of, you know, sometimes when I see some of you, the way you pray, and you shout, and you scream, and all that. I said, why are you screaming? Oh, they said the devil is so bad. I said, all you need is 20% of this kind of shouting. 20% of this kind of energy you are trying to demonstrate. The devil is not that important. That we do all the shouting, and then I lose my voice. And then they say, Pastor, what happened? I said, I was screaming at the devil. And then the devil took your voice. I said, that's what I see. The devil cannot take my voice. You know, David just said, don't worry about him. I kill the lion. I kill the bear. I've got one. I've got two. And my pastor used to say, one, two, three. This is number three. If I've done one and two, I'm going to go to number three. And we're going to take him on and defeat him in Jesus' name. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And thou anointest my head. And my cup runneth over. And then it says, surely, surely, the Philistines shall follow me. Saul shall follow me. They don't allow me to enjoy my blessing. You know, I come to this conference now, and as I'm here now, see what God is doing, and the Lord is blessing. But my brother, you know, I'll, I'll text you, I'll phone you. When we're finished, I'm telling you, those Philistines and those Goliaths, I'm telling you, I'll tell you when, 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 I, when I see you again, they'll follow me. Me, they'll not follow me. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. All, 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 ah, they say, wait, it's because you are not married yet. That's why you say you are strong. When you are married and you have in-laws, when you are married and you have this wait for that time, and then you come and tell me, but it's all the days of my life. Ah, they say, it's because you are here in Europe, you come back home. When you get back to that black continent and you see the things that happen, then come back at that time and come and tell me. But you know, all the days of my life, 
and I go everywhere. I go to Africa, I go to Asia, I go everywhere. Everywhere I have been, I've seen that all the days of my life, goodness and mercy shall follow me. And then I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Do you know there are some Christians, they are born again, they are children of God. And this fear is always coming. Yes, you are standing now. Do you know whether you will backslide before you die? Every time they hear about somebody backsliding, they will say, uh, you think you are standing now? How about you? Do you think you'll be able to stay through when you meet this and meet this? But David said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. It will happen. I said it will happen. Number one, the savior of the sinner. Number two, a shepherd of the sheep. Number three, the sovereign of the saint. We're looking at Psalm 24. Psalm 24. It says in verse Psalm 24, I'm reading from verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floors. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Then it says in verse 5, He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. God of Jacob, lift up your head, so ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. In Psalm 22, his savior. In Psalm 23, his shepherd. In Psalm 24, his king, his sovereign. And he's referred to as king a number of times in Psalm 10, verse 16. Psalm 10, verse 16. The Lord is king forever. The Lord is king for how long? Forever. And then it says, The heathen are perished out of his land. The heathen, the pagans, the idol worshippers, the rebellious sinners are perished out of his land. In Psalm 74, I'm reading there, verse 12. Psalm 74, reading verse 12. For God is my king of old. Not just the king of the universe, yes he is. Not just king of heaven, yes he is. Not just king of the whole earth, yes he is. But he is my king. Walking salvation in the midst of the earth. He wants us to understand that he is king. And then the same thing as you received him as Lord, Savior. And you received him as shepherd. A time comes in your life. You know, this is why you have differences between this one is a Christian, that one is a Christian, that other one is a Christian. This Christian, he has received him as savior. He has not received him in a very definite personal way as shepherd. Although he is born again, he's a child of God, he has Jesus as his savior. His life is, is full of anxiety and worry and panicking and fear. Yes, he's reading the Bible and yes, he's going to church and yes, he's doing everything that all the other Christians are doing, a little problem will kind of agitate him. He has Jesus as Savior. He needs to move on and receive him as, sub, as a shepherd. And then you find another kind, other kinds of Christians. Yes, they can claim this benefit and claim this benefit and claim that benefit, but they have problem with the will of God. They struggle a lot. And they argue a lot. Lord, what must I do? Why must I do that? Why must I go that way? Why must I surrender that? They have received him as savior. They have received him as shepherd. They have not received him as king, as sovereign. When you receive him as your sovereign, as your king, there's no argument. 
Wherever he wants you to go, you go. When he wants you to stay, you stay. When he wants you to do something, you do it. He wants you to give up something, you give it up. Because you have not only received him as savior and as shepherd, you have received him as sovereign. You know, some other people, they say they are Christians, and they say, Lord, if that is what you are telling me to do, forget it. If I need to go out of the church, I'll get out of the church. If that is what you are saying, that this is your will, and this is the way, and this is the thing to submit to, Lord, forget about that. Receive him as king. There will be no argument anymore. You see the people that just jump into Psalm 23 and they don't do any other thing more than Psalm 23. And they have not taken Jesus Christ as their Lord, as their King, as their Sovereign. That's why they have a lot of all these struggles and they don't enjoy the Christian life. But when you say, Lord, thy will be done. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus, my Savior, my King, I surrender all. The struggling is stopped is totally cancelled in your life in little things in great things in mighty things in minute things you surrender everything to the lord because he is king he is lord and he is sovereign and that's why it says over here it says god my lord the lord is my king and is king forever in jeremiah chapter 10 jeremiah chapter 10 and here we're looking at verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 10. But the Lord is the true God. Is that right? He is the living God, an everlasting king. An everlasting king. Now that we know that Jesus Christ is Lord and Jesus Christ is king, what's the implication of that? What are you going to tell him as your Lord? As your king, I'm looking at Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 15. Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 15. Second Samuel 15, verse 15, because he is king, the king of glory. And he is my king, he is my lord, he is my sovereign. In verse 15 of Second Samuel 15, and the king's servant said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint that's the language of somebody who has gone into psalm 22 into psalm 23 and now into psalm 24 he knows christ yes a savior he knows christ number two a shepherd he knows christ number three as a king and as a sovereign and he said any day any time whatever it is it says, we don't even need to discuss it. I know that he is my king. And your servants, your children, your people are ready to do whatsoever the Lord my king shall appoint. In First Kings chapter 20 verse 4. First Kings chapter 20. I'm reading verse 4. First Kings chapter 20 verse 4. And the king of Israel answered and said, my Lord... O king, according to thy saying, I am thine and all that I have. That's the language of the person who has deliberately, you've come to that situation where you say, I'm not going to be a bread and butter Christian only for prosperity, only to get this.